Uh, hello ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned in to Educate. Today we are going to be talking about pteridophytes in grade 11 in life sciences. So, uh, division pteridophyta falls under the kingdom plantae. Remember that in our previous video we talked about bryophytes, which is uh, the first division. So now the second division of the kingdom plantae is the division pteridophyta. So when you're talking about pteridophytes, they usually refer to plants that look like this. So these plants, uh, this kind of a plant is specifically called a fern. So do not be surprised when you see the word fern. It actually means pteridophyte as well. So they usually refer to pteridophytes. Most pteridophytes are ferns. So if you see me using the word fern, it means that uh, I'm referring to pteridophytes. So this is a plant that looks like this. This is a pteridophyte. It falls under the division pteridophyta. So now uh, most pteridophytes uh, require a warm, a damp, and a shady habitat. So it means for these plants to grow, they need a place that is warm, meaning that that place has got warmer temperatures. That place must be damp as well as it must be shady when you say that the place has to be shady it means that it can be maybe in the woods whereby there are a lot of trees and there's a lot of shadows there so in those shady areas we find ferns developing there so the size of the ferns vary from small plants to big trees so if they can ask what is the size of a fern or describe the size of a fern you're just going to say that they can vary from small plants to big trees just like this one this one is almost like a big tree but then it's just a plant so this is a type of a pterodophyte called a fern so let us now proceed to the characteristics of pterodophytes remember that we've got a certain criteria in which we identify different divisions of the kingdom plant here. So this criteria, I've used it in my previous video talking about bryophytes. This criteria is the one that helps you to differentiate between different divisions under the kingdom plant here. So now, first thing, does the plant have roots, true roots, stems and leaves? So when a plant has true roots, stems and leaves, we say that it is not thallus. So for example, now, now we go to pteridophytes. Pteridophytes, to answer this question, pteridophytes do have true leaves, true roots, as well as true stems. So since they have those true roots, leaves, and stems, we say that they are not thallus. So they may ask you to describe the plant body of a pteridophyte. You're going to say that it is not this is the plant body, meaning that it is made up of true leaves, roots, as well as stems. And then number two, the second question says, does the plant have conducting tissue? We need to ask ourselves, do pteridophytes have conducting tissue such as xylem and phloem? Remember that conducting tissue it is used to, for transportation of nutrients as well as water. So... To be specific, xylem transports water to the plant and phloem transport photosynthetic products or nutrients or the food for the plant. So now, as for pteridophytes, they do have that vascular tissue or that conducting tissue such as xylem and phloem for the transportation of water and nutrients, causing some of them to grow bigger. I remember that when there is conducting tissue in a plant, it means that there will be more nutrients, then there will be more water and nutrients that are transferred to the plant, that are transported to the plant. Hence, the plant is able to grow bigger than the bryophytes. So the bryophytes, they usually like to use these examples called mosses. So mosses are a type of bryophyte. So they can just say mosses instead of bryophytes. So they grow bigger than bryophytes because they've got conducting tissue or vascular tissue such as xylem for the transportation of water as well as phloem for the transportation of nutrients or rather photosynthetic products. And then now we go to question three. It says how does the plant reproduce? How? We have to answer how something happens but then we have to answer here how does the plant 
at the produce when you talk about reproduction it means that how does the plant make more of its kind so how does the plant make more of its kind these are the ways so fans reproduce both sexually and asexually remember that we say that when they produce sexually they involves a fusion of two gametes so it means that there must be two 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 gametes involved in the sexual reproduction we'll talk about it later on as well as asexual reproduction it means that they can they can reproduce on their own so the dominant generation in ferns or the pteridophytes remember we said that ferns are pteridophytes so the dominant generation in ferns is the sporophyte generation in the previous video talking about bryophytes i explained that the sporophyte generation is the one that produces spores spores are just almost like seeds they just develop in what we call the sporangia so it means that when spores when these spores develop the wind will disperse them the wind will blow them away into the ground then they will start growing into a tree or rather a plant so here there's a sporophyte generation in which spores are produced in the sporangia arranged in soil under the leaf so it means that this sporangia that produces spores for the reproduction of the plant remember that spores are just like seeds it is arranged under the under the leaf which is in a part called the soil in in, in the following image i'll just indicate it so you can see here in this image that uh, this is a fan and then under the leaf here you can see all these these brown things these are called sorry there so in the sorry you find sporangia that sporangia is the one that produces spores which are just like seeds and those spores are going to be dispersed or blown by the wind to grow into plants so we have answered that question now we go to question number four do they need water for reproduction so do they depend on water for reproduction so pteridophytes in comparison to bryophytes they depend less on water they depend less on water for reproduction this means that pteridophytes don't really need more water so that they can reproduce or make more of its kind compared to bryophytes so we have answered these questions that enable us to differentiate between divisions of the kingdom plantae. so now let us look at other characteristics so ferns do not produce any fruit or seed so you can see that these plants you do not expect to find any fruit you do not expect to find any seeds instead they are spores that help them to reproduce so ferns do not produce any fruit or seed so you cannot seriously go and look for fruits here no 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 that's not possible okay another characteristics or uh, another characteristic of pteridophytes or ferns the fern leaves are covered by a waxy cuticle remember that we said for a bryophyte the leaves do not have a waxy cuticle so that water can be absorbed since bryophytes do not have conducting tissue like xylem for the absorption of water so in pteridophytes since they do have a vascular system their hence their leaves have got a waxy cuticle remember that the waxy cuticles function is to prevent the excessive loss of water so if the plant has got water in it and it wants to retain that water such that the water is not lost the leaves have got what we call a waxy cuticle which is discussed in grade 10 so the waxy cuticle prevents water loss from the plant excessive water loss so they have got a waxy cuticle and then now we look at the stems the leaves and the roots of a pteridophyte so we're actually describing the plant body of a pteridophyte so remember that you said when we talk about plant body we talk of the leaves the roots and the stems we say that the plant body of the pteridophytes is not thallus meaning that they have got true true leaves roots and stems so let's talk about the stems first so the stems of ferns are called rhizomes so rhizomes is the name that you're going to use to call the stems of the pteridophytes so these rhizomes they grow horizontally and they are protected by 
brown scale like leaves so let's try to imagine that by looking at this picture so by looking at this picture we can evidently see that there are little stems here i'm not sure that if they can seen be, if they can be seen properly but then there are stems anchoring to the ground going to the ground going to the ground so those stems are called rhizomes and those stems grow horizontally and then another uh, part we talk about the leaves so the leaves of ferns are called a frond so they are called a frond they are compound leaves which means they are divided into smaller leaflets so when you talk about um, a frond or this compound leaf of a pteridophyte it means that it is not like the normal leaf which you are used to this is the normal leaf which you are used to well the ones of ferns it is more like this one this image you are seeing here you can evidently see in the image that this is the whole leaf yet you can see that it is it has got little leaves these are called leaflets so the fact that it has got leaflets we call it a compound leaf and then the third thing which is the roots the roots of ferns are adventitious we're going to be talking about uh, the difference between the adventitious roots as well as the taproot system in, a, in another video but then just know that those roots are adventitious they are true roots remember we have said that they are true roots in the beginning because they have got xylem and flu so uh, what makes uh, the roots of a plant to be true roots is because it has got xylem and flu which is otherwise called conducting tissue so it means that when the root has got xylem as well as phloem the xylem uh, is for water remember and the phloem is for nutrients so it means that it means that the roots of pteridophytes or of ferns have got xylem and phloem for the absorption of water as well as the absorption of nutrients also the function of the uh, the other function of the roots of pteridophytes is to anchor the plant to the ground so they anchor the plant to the ground remember that the fact that we're seeing this plant here and it is standing still on the ground it means that it is anchored by the roots which go and penetrate deep down the ground so that the plant can be anchored so this is just an image to um to summarize everything that i've said in the video so these are the most important characteristics the ones which i have mentioned as the criteria and then these ones are the aged additional one so when they ask you to, to describe the plant body of a pteridophyte you always talk about the stems the leaves as well as the roots so do not forget to subscribe and don't forget to to download this uh, textbook life sciences dve study guide grade 11 uh, support us by subscribing liking commenting or even donating uh, with a super thanks thank you for watching